men's basketball speed now to the Bayhine as a result of the great flick. They will play the first time in Syracuse for the State Games. Fire away. Hey, Dan, there, you guys are right there. Um, that stretch again, that little stretch where the ball went off the ref, you guys were right there with them, and, and a couple of just – it just sort of disintegrated in a, what, a span of about a minute, right? About three minutes. It uh, went from uh, – I think it was 44, 43, and then jumped uh, like 52 to uh, 43 or uh, 54 to – 45, something like that. And, uh, you know, bad shot, uh, had turnover, and then uh, the big fella uh, got in there, got two layups. And, uh, we didn't score on our end. We had some good looks, had a couple of good looks at it, uh, did not, uh, not get them down. And that's uh, the nature of basketball, especially when uh, two teams are pretty close uh, in, uh, in play. Coach, there was a moment there, you know, Michael Byers is behind the arc. He looks like he could tie the game with this shot. It doesn't go in. It kind of seemed like that's when the momentum shifted. Is that what you felt? Well, that, that started, but I don't want to say anything about Michael. I thought that was his best game that uh, he's had since he's been here. And, uh, uh, you know, he gave it all he did. That one good thing about this team, and we've been down and out, but uh, they didn't quit. And you could see it. They had a lot of fight tonight, and uh, that's a good team we played. And uh, when you play at this level, it doesn't take but about two or three minutes or two or three plays that gives a little separation between the two teams, and that team wins. And what were some of the conversations after the game in the locker room? Obviously, you know, you guys had a tough season, and, and it came up a little short. So what, what were those conversations like? Well, first of all, you thank your seniors. You got two that are leaving for sure, Michael and uh, and Darius George. And both of them have been uh, good teammates and uh, have played in the program for a long time and uh, have seen success. And uh, this year wasn't real good for their senior year, but I certainly want to thank them and uh, appreciate their efforts on behalf of Marshall. Uh, Tavion has a decision to make. You know, he... Uh, uh, he'll have, I think, uh, a chance maybe to get to uh, Chicago. You don't know about these guys, but uh, uh, get to uh, Chicago for the combine or uh, a chance at the NBA. And, uh, he'll probably have to play that, probably want to play that out and see what's best for his future in that regard. Uh, he could certainly come, come back, come back, excuse me, he certainly could come back and, uh, and that would be welcomed with open arms. But uh, again, that has to be a decision that's best for him and what he, what he is for his uh, future on down the road. But again, certainly we would, you know, entertain if he felt like he needed one more year, then we're certainly here for him. Um, after that, uh, uh, you know, where I talked to the young men, we'll uh, send them home for, uh, uh, we got spring break, so we won't do anything. But when they come back Monday, off spring break, they have a week, and then Monday, off after spring break, we'll sit down with them. They have to make decisions, and uh, uh, we have to be better. Now, there's two ways to get better. We don't have any scholarship. We've got two kids coming in, Jacob Connor, and we have a, a, another kid uh, coming in. Micah is coming in, the seven-one kid and a perimeter kid, so uh, plays a lot like Michael Byers, very similar to Michael Byers uh, coming in. Uh, we have to look at what Marshall needs, and I think each player has to look at what they want, what's best for them. But I told them what, what we have right now is not good enough, that they're going to have to commit to staying in the arena and uh, working on their game, getting better, and then getting their body in shape and uh, that they can play at, at this level. And if that's too much, then, you know, they need to find the level that they can play and, and do what they want to do. So there will be some big decisions that have to be made uh, in the course of two weeks. We get a new AD, want to talk with him and uh, see, get his thoughts and, and, and how he uh, expects the program to be run. Uh, I'm sure he'll confer with the new president. And uh, we're going into a new conference. So there's a lot of issues that we'll have to tackle but uh, the goal is, is the same, and that is to produce a high-quality championship type of team for next year in the Sun Belt. So 
a lot of decisions to be made, a lot of work to be done. Dan, if you had a, a dream player that you could go after in the portal that would bring you this and this and this, what, what would you look for? Well, uh, you know, we're, if Tavion doesn't come back, then uh, we got to have a scoring guard that uh, can put it on the floor and create his own shot. Uh, even if Tavion came back, we probably need one more of those. So I uh, need one. If Tavion comes back, doesn't come back, two. Uh, you got uh, uh, probably we got a 7 1 center coming in, but he'll be a freshman. And Tavion will be back, or not Tavion, but Tucson will be back. Um, Chase uh, McKee. Um, we, but we probably still need a, a um, maybe a more established center that has um, a body that uh, has, if we can get him. And again, the only way you get these guys is that we present a program that uh, travels right, uh, uh, has uh, all the amenities of a quality program in support of these kids. So in order to get, if we could get a good, a big body that has played inside and can get you 10 to 12, 14 points a game and 10, 9, 10, 11, 12 rebounds a game, you know, those, I think those two would be the big thing, a scoring, scoring guard and a, a, a big man that's going to be a double-double threat every, every game. Coach, you talk about the portal. We, we and your coaching staff meet in the next two weeks and kind of start looking around the country and start maybe identifying guys that you all well, want to pursue. Already, we, yeah, we've already started that. We're already in contact with uh, some uh, perimeter players. Uh, uh, we, we're looking for a bigger body kid too. So, But we've already spotted a couple of perimeter players. So, uh, you know, we'll be in the mix. There'll be a lot of people going after them and uh, – we have to present our program and sell our program, and we have to have a program that's sellable. So uh, it takes a little bit of everybody to get on board and push a program forward. But uh, I think we got the tools, and uh, we've got a program that uh, is recognized pretty good. These kids played well. We've had recent success. It hasn't been that long, uh, right before COVID. And, uh, you know, we've been through two years of COVID. And it's, uh, it's been a difficult ride. We've had two years of really uh, leadership at the university wasn't there. You know, it, uh, the transition to a new uh, president, transition to a new athletic director, you know, puts things on hold a lot. And uh, there's a, a winning, it, it has to be a winning atmosphere around all of them uh, in the, when they go to class, when they, when they go over to uh, the Shuey building or into the uh, football game or a volleyball game or, a, uh, they, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a winning atmosphere and that, that spirit transcends. And I know that you say, what are you talking about? But I know, I know what I'm talking about. You got to believe me that there's a, there is an, it, 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 I can't use the, I was going to use my craps, uh, scenario but i better not do that but uh there is a there is a winning aura that people give and we've got to establish that energy that is comes with that at the university and it'll benefit all programs and, and i believe that's going to happen i think we lost a little bit of it we got a new uh, president coming in which full of positivity and full of dreaming and thinking big we got a new athletic director that does the same. So, you know what? I, I'm looking forward to it to see if we can't uh, push this program into the Sun Belt. New conference, and we don't know exactly what level of play that is. Uh, I will say this, leaving Conference USA, this was the best Conference USA since I've been here in eight years. It was strong, and they have a lot of good teams and a lot of good coaches. So we'll see when we move into the Sun Belt, where we transit, where we stack up with all of that. And, uh, you know, my whole goal with coming back was to push Marshall into the uh, uh, NCAA and, and to raise the level of uh, recognition and play 
at the university and that uh, we had a couple of years with, like I said, with COVID that kind of set us back at the same time, lost our, our uh, leadership in the school and the athletic department. It's been a rough two years, but uh, you know, I still get excited about winning. I still get disappointed about losing and uh, I still have the energy to feel good. So I want to be a part see if we can't push, uh, push this program back to the old John Elmore day, you know, and things are rocking. So we think we can do that. We're looking forward to get the challenge, see if we can't get it done. That it? It's food time. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Dan.